So just to give you a rundown of what the 40 days, uh, the DC 40 event is going to be like, it's actually not 40 days. It's actually 51 days, if you want to be exact. Um, so the whoever made this website, I, I love how wh whoever made this website was not a professional website designer. As you can see, they, they couldn't even bother to make uh, the, the title of the website centered or um, arranged in any type of professional fashion. So, um, really, when you when you when I first looked at this DC forty event, I thought to myself, these people they're not well organized, and it really just seems like this is a, a sham. This is just a small cult organization, and so I, I at first I dismissed the entire thing. It wasn't until I realized some of the people who were behind it. And some of the people who support this movement did I um, start to worry about it. Um, but really, you know, besides being completely unprofessional and um, not having good historical or logical information, the things that they're trying to fight against, namely witchcraft and paganism, they're also employing the same tactics. They are employing black magic to do this. And I'll explain. Thank you for participating in 51 Days of Reformation Intercession. 50 states praying for reformation of one very important district. Beginning October 2nd at 6 p.m., Hawaii will take that point man position as the other 49 stand shoulder to shoulder as we as one, praying for the light of God's glory to reform our nation's capital. Now, as you can see from this clip, they are focusing their energy towards a specific cause to create change, which if you've read anything by Aleister Crowley, whose birthday was yesterday, by the way, uh, you'll know that magic is the art and science of creating change in accordance with one will, one's will. So if you, um, if you understand that, then you understand that what they're doing, whether they call on the name of a god or not, is in fact magic. And because they're doing this at the expense of the wills of other people, that would be considered black magic. Now, this is a letter that was sent by James Nesbitt um, in Prepare the Way Ministries. That's his ministry. So I can only assume that this letter was written by him or someone in his staff. Um, he's addressing pagans, which, of course, then proves that this movement is about stamping out paganism. Okay? Especially the language in this. But not only that, but they are using magic and magical language in this letter. He's talking about releasing the blood-covered light upon us. Which doesn't make any sense because, you know, of course, um, light is, um, it, it would be covered, when it's covered by blood, it, blood is an obtuse liquid, so light wouldn't really show through very well. So it doesn't really make sense in the scientific aspect, but we'll leave all the science aside for a whole nother video, okay? Um, besides that, what he's doing here is he's imposing his will, you know, from his thought process onto us. Um, he obviously doesn't respect pagans because he doesn't even capitalize the P in pagans. So he doesn't respect our community. He loves us, but then he, you know, resorts to forcing his will upon us and basically performing black magic. So, you know, there's a lot to be said about what his um, actual intention is. I see a lot in here about, you know, not so much about God as much as it is about having power over others. Once again, there's more of a, you know, controlling things aspect than there is about actually venerating a deity. Now, um, one of the things that's mentioned in the DC 40 video is that there is a prayer guide that one can download and follow along with the prayers. And this is a uh, part one of the, the prayer guide chapters one through 12. You can download it from the dc40.net video, and I'll leave a link in the description for you. Um, you know, and the link is right here as well, 40daysoverdc.com. The dc40.net and 40daysoverdc.com re re uh, relate to the same web, web page. So, um, but if you look at this uh, part of their um, agenda, basically, this is a QA and a um, where, um, you know, basically... Um, where they're talking about, you know, basically what the what the founding fathers had in mind when they talked about religion and things like that, okay? 
And it says here, in the Declaration of Independence, there is a reference to the laws of nature and of nature's God. It reminds us that all men are created equal and that they are endowed by, with, by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Because biblical knowledge was diffused throughout their culture, a general understanding was present that the, there was a true God and many false gods. Only one God could have been the creator. He was acknowledged as the source of our rights by our founders. If you go to the American Dictionary of the English Language by Noah Webster, 1828, you will find you'll be able to study the worldview that was common knowledge at the time of the founding of the United States. Look up simple words like character, truth, govern, education, teach, parent, family, and pagan. There we are again. And the reason that they want you to look up the term pagan is because they're trying to set a precedent that paganism and pagan religions were not considered to be real religions by the Founding Fathers. They are trying to get our movement stamped out. And this, once again, ties right into what the wall builders are trying to do in the federal courts right now. You know, um, I, I want to mention, first of all, that 1828 was not the time of the Founding Fathers. That was about 50 years before that, okay? 1828 was not the time of the Founding Fathers. Secondly, there are a lot of definitions that we use now that are different than what the Founding Fathers thought of. I'll give you an example. The word citizen, okay? Founding Fathers, when they used the word citizen, they were talking about white landowning males over 21. Um, that's obviously changed. Uh, it now includes to be, you know, citizens of the United States are everybody, and voting citizens are those who are over the age of 18. But there is no um, black, white, you know, um, type of litmus test anymore. Everybody is considered a citizen, you know. But back then, of course, this was during the time of slavery. Black people were not considered citizens, and really neither were women either, you know. So... Obviously, what this shows is it doesn't really matter what the Founding Fathers thought of, because we were, you know, the, the Constitution is meant to be an evolving living document, not one that's stuck back in that age of ignorance. There's one very important period of time when we're asking states to go to the, I mean, the state capitals, each state to go to their capital and worship for this three-day period. It's a timed event gate, and the pagans call it Samhain. They say it's their high holy days. We know that there are nothing high or holy. It's a timed event gate that we want to own and worship. So we're asking you to go to your state capitals. You don't have to be in the capitol building, but in the capital of your state somewhere, releasing worship during this most important period. So here we see more of that ignorant kind of disingenuous language that I was talking about. You know, uh, it's funny that they claim that the day of Samhain has no power, but then why do they want to focus on that day through the Day of the Dead, of course, for their days of quote-unquote reformation? It doesn't make any sense that if those days hold no power that they would then focus on them. Obviously, they recognize the power those days hold, but they don't want to tell their audience that they do have power, because then people might think that there's actually something to paganism. Um, you know, it's so they're, they're playing this disingenuous game where they're saying the pagans have no power, their holy days have no power, but let's use them against them, and it doesn't make any sense. We're also asking you to return to your capital a week later on 11-11-11, for 11 hours of worship, every capital in the U.S. praying for Washington, D.C. to be bathed in light and eternally changed forever by releasing the sound of who Yahweh is over our nation's capital and the capitals of these United States. Yes, that's right. They're using sound energy to strengthen their magical energy um, to uh, combat us, which they think that we're so evil for practicing magic and worshiping false gods, but yet they worship themselves and they practice black magic. So that every hour on the hour for 51 days, we can release the sound of oxygen, the foundation of all life into our nation again. One of 
the things that we hear from the Christian community so much is that we worship the creation, not the creator, because we have such profound, you know, uh, love for the divinity of nature. But yet here they are using this, the frequency of, this, uh, of the sound of oxygen to uh, strengthen their energy and release that purifying energy over Philadelphia. Okay, stay tuned for part three where I'm going to talk about more of the political agendas that this group has in, in store for them and also some of the people they're connected with um, so you can see kind of the why this movement is so dangerous.